Hello and welcome to our interview series on the occasion of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the UNESCO 1917 Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export and transfer of ownership of cultural property. On the occasion of this anniversary, Blue Ship Germany and BTU Cottbus uh, would like to celebrate the main actors and initiative involved in the fight against illicit trafficking of cultural goods and conduct interviews with notable members in the cultural heritage field as part of a social media campaign to get to know more about their perspective on the means of the convention. My name is Mathilde, I'm a student in the World Heritage Studies Master Program in Cottbus. For this session, we are going to talk about the restitution of looted artwork from colonial context. Today, my guest is Professor Chika Okeke Agulu. He is currently a professor in the Department of Art and Archaeology and the Department of African American Studies at Princeton University in the United States. His focus is contemporary art with a focus on, um, on art from Africa and its diaspora. To complete the picture, he is also an artist and an independent curator. Hello, Professor. Uh, thank you really much for joining us today. Thanks so much. Uh, so you have your own blog called Opendunka, in which you are expressing your opinions about different matters such as um, art, societal issues, the art market, and the issue, the issue of looted objects and the restitution, uh, such as the famous Berlin bronze, which were orig originally displayed in the palace of the Kingdom of Berlin. Uh, so those magnificent pieces of art are the archive of the Kingdom of Berlin and are nowadays displayed in Western Museum due to the colonial looting. Since several years now, you raise awareness about the importance of returning those objects to Nigeria. So the topic of restitution has become more and more present in the public debate. As a first question, I would like to ask if, in the light of the anniversary of the 1917 Convention, do you think the Convention has helped to bring solutions for these matters? Absolutely not. Simply because uh, it's the convention is 1970. So the earliest that anyone can use the convention to do anything is 1970. And we're talking about Benin objects that were taken in 1895. So the, the convention has, is just useless as far as um, Benin and a lot of African art is concerned. And that's why, um, I've not been a particularly great fan of the convention. I think that that date is so convenient for the institutions that are keeping the looted object, but not for those uh, from whom the objects are taken. Okay, uh, so as a next question, so among the different countries of Africa, which has suffered from Western colonialism, are there some collaborative initiatives to claim restitution of looted artworks? Well, there are different kinds of conversations happening at the moment. Uh, solutions that are being uh, offered uh, by different groups. Uh, there's, for instance, this group called the Benin Dialogue Group uh, that is uh, constituted by uh, more than 10 museums in Europe, major museums in Europe, and uh, representatives of the Nigerian government and the palace uh, in Benin. And they're having these discussions about the possibility uh, for the moment of lending some of the looted Benin uh, objects to the palace. Um, and there's also, at the moment, uh, plans for a new museum the Royal Palace uh, Museum in Benin that will then be the venue for lending some of these looted objects to the palace. Of course, I've expressed my own personal opinion about that solution, which is better than nothing uh, when you think about American institutions that have absolutely not done anything. That's better than nothing, but it's really not acceptable precisely because uh, it's based on the assumption that the European museums that are keeping these objects are the owners because you don't learn something you don't, you don't claim ownership um, for. So the assumption is that they still retain ownership of these objects that can then 
lent them to the palace. So it's a halfway measure, but it's nearly not enough. There are other conversations, as you might uh, have heard, the French president had declared a couple of years ago that objects that were looted from Africa in French uh, national collections will be returned to the African continents, to their owners. There has not been a lot of movement in that direction. Uh, only a few things are being planned to be returned. Uh, but, but again, that's some movement. Uh, I wish other heads of states in Europe uh, could make the same kind of declaration. First of all, to say that what happened to the African continent and its peoples during colonial period was wrong. That's a first place to start. Because if you could make such a declaration publicly, then the question is what next? Uh, and so there have been, of course, individual negotiations between museums in England and even in the United States and owners in Africa, but those are, you know, based on whether these museums want to take their own initiative, but there has not been a systematic um, approach to the question of colonial loots uh, from, from Africa. And that's where one would have hoped and still hope that UNESCO can come up with something much more useful than what they have so far. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, for the third question, uh, I would like to ask, besides museum collection, you're also raising awareness about ongoing auction sales, which also sell looted cultural goods from Nigeria. Uh, what measure do you expect to put an end to this practice and what role can the 1917 convention play in this? Um, well, uh, again, uh, as I said before, the, the war in Nigeria happened between 1967 and 1970. So it ended about the time that actually before the UNESCO convention even came, uh, uh, became, uh, you know, the convention that we know it uh, as today. And so again, for the massive looting that went on in Eastern Nigeria during that war, uh, the convention has nothing to offer. Instead, you have the 1954 convention, uh, UNESCO convention uh, for protection of cultural uh, heritage in times of conflict. That I think is the convention that is actually very relevant to the conversations, to the debate around the looted objects from Eastern Nigeria that I was, uh, you know, that I took up Christie's for uh, earlier in the summer. Because that convention, ought to protect and ought to have protected those objects because they were taken from Eastern Nigeria during a time of conflict, which is what the, the 1954 convention was, was designed for. Um, and so um, the problem of course, is that you still have the situation where even people who are supposed to know are still in a case like the one that I brought up with Christie's, rather than look to the 1954 convention, are uh, looking at the 1970 convention and saying, well, you see, these things were taken before 1970. So maybe they, are legal, they were legally uh, exported, even though they were not ethically exported, but legally because of the 1970 convention. So if, in this particular case, I think that the 1970 convention is actually a roadblock because it kind of gives people some sense that the looting that happened in Eastern Nigeria is legal because of the 1970 convention. So it has sort of overshadowed the 1954 convention, which is what should have been uh, in place in that particular instance um, in Eastern Nigeria. So I will still hold the Christie's to task because of the 1954 convention okay. rather than the 1970. So if I get it well, like the 1917 convention is not uh, an improvement, it's rather like a... Um... In this particular in instance, it just is not helpful. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we have one last question before conclude. Um, so now you give your insights. Um, am I think the 
last question to who is not maybe the best relevant, but why is the UNESCO 1917 Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export, and transfer of ownership of cultural, pro of cultural property important to you? So, <laughs> in some sense, okay, having said all that I have said, um, it is still important. It's better than nothing, mm. right? Um, it has been able to help in instances, especially in places like Mali, where there were vast looting of uh, terracotta from Jene and, and elsewhere, um, those conventions, the, especially the 1970 convention, has been helpful. It's been helpful in certain circumstances where uh, some African objects that were taken after 1970, after many of these countries became independent, a lot of looting had been going on. And so the 1970 convention for that, in those instances, have been helpful for post-colonial looting, mm -hmm. but not for the colonial looting, which is actually vaster than the post-colonial looting. So I would say that, yes, it's been useful in terms of certain aspects of post-colonial looting in Africa. I wish um, it could do more than uh, it, it, it has uh, done so far. That would take more action from uh, the government and stakeholders of the places where these lootings have been going on. In other words, the African Union, I would expect, for instance, to actually look at that convention more seriously and deploy the resources to enforce them. Mm -hmm. Because part of the problem has been enforcement, not that uh, we couldn't have achieved a lot more, even with the 1970 convention. But it would take a concerted effort from African governments, um, especially the African Union, to prosecute um, cases where the convention would help repatriate works that have been looted since 1970. Because there has been a lot of looting uh, that has uh, gone on since the convention came into place. And many African countries signed them at least by the 1970s and even early 80s. Um, so in that case and in that sense, I would expect that there will be, there will be more effort to actually make use of the law as it is, even as I call for perhaps another convention. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be an improvement on that of 1970. So what do you picture, like really another convention or just an improvement of the 1970 convention? If you ask me, I would rather another convention because another. 1970, as I said, has nothing to offer us as far as colonial looting. Okay. Most African countries became independent in 1960. So a whole 10 years, right? Um, after independence is when this came into force, generally. So all the looting that happened during the colonial period, the convention doesn't say much about. And I'm interested in the colonial looting because that's when European and American museums got chock full of African uh, art and cultural heritage. It was during the colonial period. So I still need a convention that addresses colonial looting. Um, whether that's a pipe dream, I don't know, but, uh, but that would be my first thing. Outside of that, well, we need to look again at the UNESCO Convention to see how it can be um, strengthened. So on the one hand, a good, you know, a new convention would be nice, uh, but rearming the 1970 Convention um, would be quite important. Okay, then yeah, thank you really much. It was really interesting because you really bring like both sides of the convention, like the weakness and the strength as well. So yeah, thank you really much for taking the time to speak with us. It was really interesting, really. And talking to people who watched the video, thank you also for watching the video. I I hope you find it as interesting uh, as 
us. Um, please make sure to visit the um, link provided below to watch uh, other interviews about organization and notable member of the heritage field. And also, uh, if you want to know more about the work of uh, Professor Chika Okeke Aguru, you can find uh, the link of his blog of Odunka below the video as well. So thank you very much. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.